Is it really safe to skip your period? Let's hear what an OBGYN, that's me, has to say about it. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author, social media educator, and podcaster, and I'm here to be the health class you wish you had in high school. Before I get started, go ahead and like and subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss one of these videos. Do you remember in a recent video when I was talking about ways that you can skip your period using different methods like birth control and a pill called norethindrone acetate? That well, was a really good video, if I do say so myself. And a lot of you had this next question. Dr. Jen, is it really safe to skip your period? So I thought I'd make a video about it. Before I even answer that, I want to kind of set the stage of where we are when it comes to periods. We have never had so many periods in our lifetimes than we are right now in this moment in history. And that's for a few reasons. The first is that we're living a lot longer, which means we have more time to have periods. The second is that we're healthier, and so we're more likely to menstruate or have a period. The third is that we're not pregnant as often. So back in the old days, we started having our periods shortly thereafter we got married and we started having babies from like the age of 14, 15 beyond. We were pregnant all the time because we had no birth control. And then maybe we died around the age of 35. Sorry, that's like a really not fun view of history, but it's true. So truly we've never menstruated more in our entire lives. So this idea that we're skipping periods and we're not having what we've you know, historically had is actually not accurate. So here's my answer on whether or not it's safe to skip your period. Yes, it's safe. And no, it's also not safe. That's a really annoying answer, but here's the reason why. So here's when it is safe to skip your period. If it's because you're on birth control and that's why you're skipping your periods or for a reason like you're breastfeeding and that's why you're not having your period. So I'm gonna talk about that first and then I'll talk about the reasons that actually ooh, we'd want you to see a doctor or a healthcare provider if you're not getting your period at the end. So let's talk about skipping your periods on birth control. Yes, it's absolutely safe. And here's some reasons that people might want to do it. Number one, they just don't like having a period. It's crampy or it's heavy, or they just know that they don't have to have one. And so they don't want to. So people will use birth control to either stop their periods completely or to lighten it up. Other reasons that people may not want to have a period is because they're trans and their gender dysphoria really heightens when they have a period or they've got developmental disabilities or delays and having a period is really difficult from an emotional standpoint and also a hygiene standpoint. So lots of real good reasons why someone may not want to have a period. Here's what I want you to know about skipping periods when on birth control. If I could shout this from the rooftops, I want you to know that just because you don't get periods when you're on birth control, it will in no way, shape or form affect your future fertility meaning that once you stop that birth control, your fertility will go right back to where it was and will not at all be affected because you used birth control. We have lots of studies to prove this, yet there's so much misinformation about this every day. Using birth control will not somehow cause you to go through menopause sooner or use up your eggs or have issues with ovulation. That's completely untrue. The second thing I wanna really address about why it's okay and a myth that I often hear when people think, oh my goodness, you want me to skip my period? This can't be safe. This idea that there's all this stuff building up inside of you and having a period means you flush it out. The thing is when you're using birth control to suppress your period, that lining of the uterus, which is what every month builds up and comes out, it's not building up, so it doesn't need to come out. So it's not like things are filling up and you need to like periodically flush it out. Now it's true, you may get some breakthrough bleeding if you're not having a period. Let's say you're using a pill continuously or a patch or a ring and you may notice some spotting and that's because yeah, a little bit of that lining of that uterus may be there, but it's not like it's a whole amount of a period and needs to come out. And going back to that breakthrough bleeding part, just curious, do you want me to cover that in a future episode? If so, put that in the comments below and I can get on to making that one. Another question I get all the time is, okay, I, I get that for adults, but what about for teenagers? Isn't that like not safe for them to do this? And the answer is absolutely. There's no reason that we should be forcing our teenagers to endure heavy or painful periods if they don't have to or they don't want to. We don't recommend starting birth control before somebody has their first period, but once they've had a period and if they find that it's troublesome or annoying or they need some help, yes, they can use birth control and it's safe. So yes, an OBGYN here is telling you it is safe to skip your periods if you're on birth control, like hormonal birth control and using it in a way where you don't have that withdrawal bleed in that period or you're breastfeeding and your hormone levels are lower and so you're not going to get a period anyway. Here's when it's not safe. It's not safe when you're not on birth control because that's actually a sign that something else is going on. So it could be a sign of infertility, which is not dangerous, but could be harmful in the long term if you want to conceive and try to have a family. So instead of saying, oh my gosh, I love that I don't get periods right now. I'll worry about it later when I'm, you know, 
with a partner, want to have kids. No, if you're not having periods, and I'll talk about when you should kind of get that checked out, it's important because time is of the essence. And if there's a fertility issue going on, even if you don't want to have kids right now, it's important to get to the bottom of that now so we can decide if we need to intervene or do something or plan for the future when you might want to. The other big issue is that irregular periods when you're not on birth control put you at risk for cancer in the long term. And this is something that I've seen over and over again where patients have said, well, I didn't get any periods or I got them every you know, five or six months and I ignored it because I like not having a period. And then they come in and they've got cancer of the uterus. That's the big one that you're at risk for. And that's because that normal dance of hormones, the normal cycle that they go through, if it's not happening regularly, the lining of the uterus can be built up in an abnormal way. Those cells can go a little crazy, become atypical and progress to uterine cancer. That really sucks because if somebody knew ahead of time that they should have sought care, they could have caught it much earlier and either prevented their cancer or caught it at an earlier stage. So here's when we consider it irregular enough that we should know about it because we want to make sure we're not missing something that could potentially become cancer. So if your cycles, and when I say cycle, I mean from the first day of bleeding of your period until that day before the next day of bleeding. So a cycle, let's say it's normally 28 days between your periods. That's what I mean when I say cycle. So not like the days that you're bleeding, but a full menstrual cycle. So if that full menstrual cycle is varying by more than seven to nine days between periods, that's considered irregular. It can be totally normal to have your cycle be off by a day or two from month to month, but when you hit more than a week, that's considered irregular and we want to know about it. We also want to know about it if your periods are more than 35 days apart. So your cycles are 35 days or longer for those same reasons. We also wanna know if you've gone months without a period. So our typical timeline we say is if it's been three months, we want to know about it. Now, one exception is if you're a teenager, it can be very normal in those first couple of years when you're getting a period to have it be all over the place. And that's because your body and the brain over a connection is still maturing and growing. But if you're a younger person and you've gone through that and now your periods are regular and then all of a sudden they become irregular again, we would like you to check in with us. So what will we actually do when you come in and see us? Well, we'll ask a lot of questions. We may or may not do a pelvic exam. And if you're worried about that and you want to know what that's like, go ahead and watch this video up here where I demonstrate what a pelvic exam could be like because sometimes just knowing is more helpful than not. But we're going to screen for things that could be causing your irregular or absent periods. So things like polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, issues with your thyroid or other autoimmune disorders. Something like premature ovarian insufficiency, which we used to call premature ovarian failure, and I hate that name, but basically menopause earlier than when it should be happening. So maybe a combination of blood tests, physical exam, maybe an ultrasound and some other things to get to the bottom of this. It's kind of too big of a topic to get into right now, but the treatment can be birth control, not because we're just trying to cover things up as people often say on social media, but because we're trying to regulate your periods so you don't get cancer, which if you ask me, is a darn good reason to take a medication. <laughs> we also may do other things like lifestyle modifications, doing other screenings for heart disorders, high cholesterol, hypertension, because sometimes these things travel together. It just depends. The take home message is that if you're not getting your period regularly or at all, and you're not on birth control, we should know about it. So yes, to wrap this up, you absolutely can skip your period. There's no reason to have a period if you're on birth control. And if you want to talk to your doctor about ways to do it safely or watch my YouTube video up here where I talked about it recently. I hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions, comments, thoughts, go ahead and drop them in my comment section. Head to my show notes for references and resources and follow me elsewhere at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln on my socials and my podcast where I answer your questions directly. So if you've got one and you wanna ask me, go ahead to my Instagram and give me a voice DM and I'll add it to my list of questions. Until next time, stay safe, my friends.